Hi, this is your host, Supnil Bharatiya, and welcome to TFR Let's See. And today we have with us Philip Jarwasi, Director of Technical Evangelism at Kentic. Philip, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, and today we are going to talk and see, of course, a demo, but the theme is Generative AI for Network Operations. Uh, before we deep dive into this topic, of course, we cover Kentic on a regular basis. But just quickly remind our viewers, what is Kentic all about? Kentic is all about augmenting an engineer, uh, which over the years has changed from network engineer to cloud engineer to SRE to even a developer from time to time that we work with. But uh, someone working in the IT tech stack and augmenting them to be able to ultimately, ultimately deliver applications uh, more reliably and in a more performant manner. So Kentic is known as a network observability company. Uh, with our roots many years ago, working with service providers and primarily flow data, flow-based uh, telemetry, but now encompassing an incredible amount of telemetry that we ingest from the network, network adjacent services and devices, so that we can just paint a very good picture of what's happening uh, historically, what's happening right now, uh, both for uh, analysis, for predictive analysis, uh, for troubleshooting, root cause analysis, all of those things to ultimately augment an engineer and uh, and keep the lights on for what they're trying to do, ultimately deliver an application to, uh, to an end user. Excellent, thanks for the overview. Now let's also talk about how is Kentic embracing, of course, one of the hottest topic these days is Gen AI. Uh, talk a bit about how you folks are leveraging it at what scale, is it early stages or it's in production? And if you also look at it from the perspective of observability or specifically network observability, what benefits Gen AI, AI brings to this table? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad that you're distinguishing between generative AI and general AI, because that is a that is a sharp difference there. Uh, certainly related under the broader umbrella of artificial intelligence. But keep in mind that the term artificial intelligence is a broad term under which there are many technical components. So for example, uh, uh, we've been using uh, statistical analysis algorithms that you might learn in college or graduate school, nothing terribly complex, for years. And applying uh, machine learning models uh, also for years. Uh, it's not new. And those are the technical mechanisms that we use in, in the broader scope of AI. Now, generative AI is, is more, uh, uh, as opposed to general AI, uh, typically thought of in terms of natural language processing and what we call today uh, large language models. That's typically what we're talking about. Um, and so being able to look at a very large body of data, whether that be text in the context of large language models and, and, and natural language processing, and then doing something meaningful with it, uh, summarizing it, uh, being able to predict what you're going to write and being able to understand not just the words, uh, like in early LLMs using uh, n-gram models and predictive analysis there, but then also being able, in, in recent days, the research is fascinating, but being able to then also interpret your intent and the nuance of human language and and sometimes the, the contradictions and the errors that we might find. So what is the intent behind what this person is saying? And so what we're seeing today with generative AI, this idea of being able to generate a response back to the, to the person, putting in that input, that prompt, we're seeing a a shift in how human beings can interact with a body of data. Now, I'm, I'm using that as an ambiguous term, data, because in, in my world, that data is telemetry from a network. It's packets and flow logs and, and VPC flow logs from AWS and, and um, uh, SNMP information and streaming telemetry, all these infra uh, infrastructure-based in, uh, information. Whereas LLMs are looking at uh, language. They're looking at bodies of text, like I said. And so uh, one of the advancements that we've seen in recent days, specifically with generative AI, and I'm going to now shift to using uh, large language models as my primary term, LLMs, is that ability to interact with that underlying database. So if you can imagine a engineer going from device to device in a troubleshooting scenario, perhaps a mission critical troubleshooting scenario, entering various commands, trying to what we call clue chain, figure out what's going on. It's tedious, it's error prone, it's inefficient. Nevertheless, it's what we do as engineers. So it is effective. LLMs allow us and generative AI allow us to apply models to the underlying data. It could be configuration information, could be that telemetry that I spoke of, it could be um, 
all of that to then interact with the data in a more efficient, faster way to expedite that mean time to resolution. What I mean by that is now rather than entering show commands and, and writing queries and, and going from device to device and looking at things, I can simply use my natural human language um, and, and enter that into a prompt. And the model uh, is able to discern what I'm saying, what I'm asking, what my request is, uh, and then hopefully produce an accurate response. Uh, so if I ask it, why is my application slow in my Chicago office? Or uh, please show me all my firewalls that are reporting high utilization. And I'm speaking in very infrastructure-like terms because that is my world. The LLM can produce a response for me. Uh, imagine how, how, how much faster we can perform a root cause analysis, how much more reliable our infrastructure is. And, and, and when I say infrastructure, I want to I wanna emphasize that this is mission critical stuff. It's not just making sure we have access to Facebook. You know, and where I live in New York, uh, you know, all 911 services are tied through networking. All, all, uh, all the hospitals in the area have their, you know, online patient records management software and their cloud-based ERPs and, and, and all these things. And, and then, of course, we have our businesses that run their CRMs and transactions over, over the network. So uh, it, even, even something as mundane as your local small school district. You think about, well, they don't, they don't care about this stuff. Well, not necessarily. Think about um, every single one of the school buses today often have a, an internet connection, maybe if it's over cell network, uh, and, and they're tracking school buses. So there's, there, you know, there's children on the school bus. This is mission critical life and death stuff. So it's very critical that we're able to resolve these problems of application delivery in, in, in all of these scenarios much faster, more efficiently. That's where we're heading right now. Now, where we might go in the next few years, what I see is be, those results that we get via the generative, generative AI through those LLMs, through those prompts, uh, we're going to see a greater amount of accuracy, and we're going to see uh, the LLMs being trained on more and more data, so that way we can have more practical applications rather than the smoke and mirrors that we might see from time to time today. So if you look at, you know, of course, sticking to the term generative AI, uh, and if you look at operators, teams, you know, who are looking at the whole observability, uh, and observability is a big space, is it complementing their efforts, giving them more tools, more capabilities? Because sometimes we do make a mistake of looking at Generative AI going to replace the jobs, but the fact is that uh, at times it just uh, provides you more powerful tools. Uh, of course, it will remove a lot of mediocrity, but it will also help teams at a high level. So can you also talk a bit about uh, how do you see it complements the observatory teams? You have to remember that today, the infrastructure that we rely on for, for everything um, in our digital world is much more complex than it was 25 years ago when it was your computer and then a server down the hall and maybe some fiber optic, or fiber optic, my goodness, it was probably just copper in between. Today, we are utilizing that, sure, that on-premises campus network. We also have Wi-Fi, cloud computing, containerized uh, services, SaaS companies that we don't, we don't own or manage or have any purview over. We just consume. And, uh, and then all, of course, the, the layers of security in between, there's a tremendous complexity that we have today that we didn't have 25 years ago. And so our operational teams, whether that be security operations, network operations, uh, developers, uh, SREs, all of these teams that work in various places in the tech stack are inundated with tremendous amount of data. And so uh, this this, the application of generative AI today only augments an engineer to facilitate a easier, more efficient uh, data analysis, something that is near impossible for a, a single person to do. Uh, I, I suppose if you had a team of 20 engineers from MIT working on it, they could figure out something for you pretty quickly. Um, but barring unlimited budgets and, and uh, superhuman capabilities, we're leveraging generative AI to do that data analysis for us because our hand is forced today. We don't have the option of, of just a few, a few you know, server logs and, uh, and a very simple infrastructure. It's not the case. So we have no choice but to leverage something to make our uh, job not just easier, but possible in the first place. So I agree with you that we are not at risk of losing all our jobs, uh, but instead we are gaining a new tool to augment our day-to-day -day tasks so we can do it better. Ultimately, 
generative AI is not making decisions for you and, and necessarily pushing config, although we you know may get to that automated re- remediation point in, in some you know in the future where we have generative AI working alongside general AI agents. But for now, no, I, I, I agree with you that we're not, we're not uh, at, at risk of losing jobs. In fact, we have a new field here. So I do see a, a new field of burgeoning job opportunities. Excellent, thanks. Now, I want to see uh, kind of, you know, if you can show our viewers a demo of some of Kentex, you know, AI capabilities. What I'll do is start off with, uh, with my company. What we're doing is applying generative AI to, again, interrogate data more easily. So for our customers that typically are network engineers, cloud engineers, um, uh, SREs, uh, those those folks, uh, they're, they're you know trying to deal with all of this data that I just mentioned previously. It's a tremendous amount of volume and also in a variety of format and type. Very difficult to just clue chain and kind of piece together in your own mind. Nevertheless, it's what we do but we need to do it better. So at Kentig, what we're doing is applying generative AI to facilitate an engineer querying data much more quickly. So think of it as a, a better layer in between you as an engineer and then the underlying database. Um, and, and so what we have, um, if I can go to my main menu, I'm gonna start with Kentic Journeys. Journeys is a uh, term that we use and I can uh, go to a new journey here, and I'll start it, to kind of describe the journey of interrogating the data by starting with a question, saying, show me something. Again, using natural human language. Getting a response, and then continuing on that path of saying, well, uh, show me this instead, or show, filter it this way. So let me give you an example. I'm going to copy and paste for the sake of time. Uh, let's say I wanna see uh, interface utilization for the past 15 minutes uh, by device, and I want to group it that way. Rather than go to all my various devices or click through screens, I can simply enter that into a pom- uh, prompt here, and the, the device, or rather the system, will answer it for me. So you're going to see it um, uh, query the database, and it's going to show me those uh, devices, their interface utilization for the last 15 minutes. So. But let's say I want to go deeper, and this is where the term journeys comes into play. Let's say I want to see that, uh, but I only want to see devices that are having that have utilization greater than 20%. Well, all I need to do is just add on to that because the system remembers what I just asked. So this follow-up prompt is in the same context. This is where uh, uh, it's able to build, and when we you know call it a journey. So if I do that. And uh, it's, what it's doing under the hood is adding to that filter for that query, and now it's going to produce the result of showing me that same information, but for devices that are greater than 20%. It says no devices, so let's say greater than 10%. Now imagine me doing this manually, going device to device and going through literally individual, is here I have only one. Imagine going through all the devices in my network looking for that one device that has utilization over 10%. Or clicking through screens of various tools. Perhaps I have devices that support SNMP but not streaming telemetry, and devices that are using streaming telemetry but not SNMP, or flow, or all these other metrics. Using generative AI in this way, I can interrogate the data and abstract away all those data formats, all those data types. All of it is in a single database that is interrogated for me. All I have to do is ask it, in this case, using simple human language. What I'd like to show you now is in our uh, network monitoring system, NMS, I am going to actually go to the query assistant, which uh, this is interrogating specific device information. Uh, So based on SNMP and streaming telemetry. And let's say I wanna go to, uh, uh, I wanna see that same information about utilization. And you can see here in the prompt, query data effortlessly with natural language. We also provide tips for building good prompts because we have learned that generative AI is an interaction with human beings. And so your prompts are important to the accuracy and to the, to the coherence of the results that you get. So I'll ask a similar question here, copy and paste that in, and we'll see what the system produces. 
Now, uh, keep in mind that what's happening under the hood is that it is actually generating the query, the, sys the, the series of filters that I'm going to use to generate the response. So here I asked in, in human language, show me interfaces with highest utilization. But notice here the query that it developed. Now, this is a very simple query, so it's not that complex, but you could see that it created um, a, a series of metrics based on counters, based on utilization, inbound, outbound, using the device name and interface name, and so forth. Did this automatically for me. And you can make it as complex as you like. Now, keep in mind that the more complex, the greater depth that the query becomes and the longer it takes. But let's say I want to focus on, I, I don't know what any of these interfaces are. I see a device name, but I need interface descriptions. All I need to do, like I did with the journeys, is add on to that. And it will uh, automatically add the uh, filters to the query. And you'll see that generate uh, automatically here on the right. And in this way, I can interrogate data on the fly of what's going on in my network right now or what's going on in my cloud environment right now, but also historically if I add filters like show me from the last two hours or from last week or whatever, whatever you want to do, and it automatically adds the filter. And you can see here, now I have description, device name, the information that I want. And, and that was kind of just a random choice there of what I wanted to see for your sake. So you can see the kind of things that I can put into this. And this is a show me, but you can certainly ask uh, the question to um, um, uh, present or you know, any, any other kind of words that you use to generate the response that you want. And so this is how Kentix specifically, but many others in the industry are using generative AI today to, again, interrogate data and, as I said earlier, facilitate or augment a network engineer, a cloud engineer, SRE, to, uh, to reduce mean time to resolution and to make sure that applications are delivered, delivered more reliably and, and with the performance that we expect. Well, thank you so much for taking time out today and, of course, uh, talk about generative AI, AI for network uh, operations. Thanks for the great demo, and I would love to chat with you folks again. Thank you.